It's about that time. Sing news, sing news. What's happening in your city? Sing news, sing news. Sing news, sing news. Got love for your city? Sing news, sing news. Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to another episode of City View. So glad to be here in the big chair, hanging out, doing the doggone thing. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> for sure. We're with my lovely and talented co-host, Corice Villarol. Hi, welcome yeah. back. Yep, yep, and... Um, Unfortunately, um, Karen and Kareem uh, will not be with us here tonight. No. Um, duty calls. Duty does call, and Karen is busy with the golf tournament. You know, and uh, you know that golf tournament, man. It just gets like so many people up and going. I feel going, like it you know? gets bigger and bigger every year. Yeah, people get amped up, you know. Yeah. And I don't know if it's you know the timing of you know them doing the golf as a time when golf is becoming more popular or if it's, you know, Friendly Hands Food Bank and people <laughs> understanding, you know, the need yeah. and the community. I, th for I think it's a, a combination of both, you know, knowing Friendly Hands Food Bank and, you know, the season is starting to finally, finally warm up out there. Yep. So it is golf season. Yep. People are ready to get out there, get on the green, yep. you know, ready to golf. You know, and I've been checking out golfing a little bit myself lately. You know, not that I'm a golfer by any <laughs> means or any stretch of the imagination. Uh, however, uh, I noticed, you know, gol the golfers have changed over the years. You know, back in the day you had, you know, your, you know, your Arnold Palmers and... VJ Singh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Player, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but, you know, now these golfers... You know, I, I think Tiger's kind of changed the game a little bit where these golfers look like they could be, you know, uh, defensive backs, you know, for the <laughs> Chicago Bears or something, you know. Like, but uh, I, it's just nice to see the, the sport evolve as it has and uh, that it's been able to, um, you know, change so many lives and perceptions in terms of, you know, access to the game. Right, right, yeah, so, yeah. It's a great game, great game. Uh, you know, I... I I don't know. <laughs> I'll caddy. I'll caddy, you know, say I'll... You know, you even have to go to school for that. You do? Yeah. You can't just say you want to caddy and caddy. I'm see. looking at myself and I'm realizing <laughs> that people can see my lovely headpieces. <laughs> I forgot I had it on. It feels so natural. It's my crowning glory. <laughs> I know you guys are all probably wondering mm. what is going on with these headpieces on, the ta on our table here. And the one on my head, right? What's going on? <laughs> well, we are going to get to that. It's part of a program that I have developed in association yep. with the, in teaching the, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Because as you know, that's you know what I go around doing is I, I talk about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And these headpieces I have um, incorporated into my programming as, as an activity, a team building activity. Um, that you can do whether it's whether I present it at an office or whether I do this presentation at a school. Right. Um, I've do, you know coming from the Caribbean, I'm all about carnival. Right. So of course I'm going to take what's natural to me and what I know has always brought people together, and use it in in my program. And so that is why we have. Do you mind if I? Sure. Go right okay. ahead. Now tell me, what does that one remind you of? Doesn't that have more of the, this like? bird peacock feel right or or even um rio actually i made that one for um a dance that they're doing 
um, June 2nd, and it's like a Rio, Rio inspired um, dance. Rio, the, the Disney sh movie, Rio. I don't know, I was thinking more like a Caribbean leprechaun. <laughs> Caribbean leprechaun. And Lucky Charms. <laughs> 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 it's all about the culture. <laughs> and this is why I have not taken him to Trinidad as yet. Okay, but I want to go there. I want to go. <laughs> He's going to get I off the plane and start talking like that to everyone he sees. And I'm just going to have to hold my head. I want to show my head roots, man. Oh, dear. Here we go. Not quite. Well, I'm going to have to give him some, um, some lessons, uh, some, some dialect lessons. <laughs> Before I take him to Trinidad, that's for sure. But yeah, I mean, these are, th he has the female headpiece on. But this no is wonder. the male headpiece here. <laughs> you did that on purpose. You did it on purpose. All right, switch, switch. Okay, okay. Let me, let me let you put this one on. And so the way my programming works is, um, this is not the way you, the headpieces come when we, when, when I do a, a, a presentation. They actually come as just separate feathers. You get the beads separate. Everything is separated. Is this as far down as it goes? No, hold on. Take it off. Let me untie it. Okay. I was going to say I got a big head. <laughs> okay. So let's just, I'll tie it here. That, okay. Hopefully that's wide enough. Okay. <laughs> he said he has a big head, but you know, who am I to? Oh, I do. Okay. Is that too, too loose now? Wait a minute. I think it's too loose, which I can easily... Tighten that up. Tighten that up for you. So let's see here. Ouch! <laughs> no locks are in the way, stop it. <laughs> I am a lion! <laughs> is, is that one giving you a lion feel? It's giving me, a, not only is it giving me a lion feel, I feel like, uh, I'm the king of the margarines. <laughs> Are you Simba? <laughs> <laughs> I can conquer all. <laughs> you just need your staff now. Yeah, I do. Uh, Musafa. Musafa, is yeah, that what it is? Yeah. My staff, please. <laughs> but, um, you know, later on in the program, I mean, yeah. we're really going to get into, cool. into the ins and outs of how, how the program operates and, and, and what I do. Um, and it's called... Coco's Carnival Dance of Unity. Awesome. So we'll get into that. We'll dive a little deeper. But as you know, June is Caribbean Heritage Month. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I would love to, you know, just be going around to different um, companies, whether it be corporations, businesses, or even schools and, and do this presentation and have the kids make this fun headpiece. I mean... Who doesn't like jewels and feathers and just feeling like, like, you know, almost that Vegas feel, that Vegas style. Yeah, Vegas style, Vegas style. So, yeah, we are definitely going to get more into that. What so, do you think? Do you like it? I, I, I do. I do. It's, it's working. It's working. Um, and uh, speaking of working, uh, we're going to be um, making a move here momentarily to uh, the telephone line. And we're going to be hearing from Gina Bunch Gina from Bunch. Daily Moving and Storage. Do you know she's my neighbor? I know. I found out she was your neighbor. Um, yeah, I guess it's... And she's a great neighbor. Great well, neighbor. I, I, can, I can imagine because she's a true gem. Um, and uh, She's such a sweetheart. She she's is. a darling. Definitely. She definitely is. So uh, we're going to be hearing from her momentarily. She's going to be giving us a call. Yeah, yeah. Can't wait to hear from her. Um, so, while we have this opportunity, I want to take this time to uh, let you all know about something that's going on in the neighborhood, all right? Um, the Five Points Art Center presents Leroy Chessick, a Vietnam combat war photographer. Wow. Yeah. And uh, they're asking you to join Leroy and uh, share his experiences from the Vietnam War. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's taking place Saturday, May 18th. That's this Saturday, 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. Five Points Art Center, 855 University Drive in Torrington. The event is free and open to the public. And is it at 
the Five Points downtown, or is it at the one up? Up on, uh, off the Freedom Trail. Okay. Right the old Yukon. The old Yukon branch. Uh, also, uh, the On site, University Drive. On the side of the new, um, the Trails Network and the John Brown Homestead. Are the trails completed up there? The trails are completed. Really? The trails are completed. Uh, I would love to definitely do those trails. I'm just, right now I feel like the bears are really... Well, Active. Uh, you know, but, you know, bears will be bears. <laughs> <laughs> that is not giving me comfort right bears there. Bears <laughs> that will be not, bears. That's not comforting, Jacques. Well, I'm, I'm you know what, though? Uh, <laughs> I think, you know, for the most part, um, it's, it's pretty safe. I, I, I'll I just wouldn't. do like Seth Green, roll up in a ball and just pretend I'm... No. <laughs> Take me along with you. I will protect you <laughs> from the bass. I will take them out with the urgency. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that does sound like an absolutely amazing program to go yeah, to. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, on the 18th, you said Saturday. This what Saturday, time? This Saturday, 2 p.m. 2 p.m., yeah, wow. Yeah. I mean, anyone who, whether you're there taking pictures or, you know, they're fighting, I think you're still going to have that, it's still going to, have that same effect on you mentally. Um, and, and to be a photographer over there during that time must have been wild. Well, I can't even imagine. If you think about where the country was then, if you <clears throat> were old enough to, to live through that, um, it was a pretty, um, pretty contentious time in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if you look at <clears throat> the riots and protests back then, and, and if you look at the riots and protests now there there's some differences mm -hmm. um, it's um, and I, 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 I that might have a little bit to do with how the media covers yeah those things because you know back then you had basically you know the big three networks and that was it and that was it and now you have so many other media outlets and people can take so many different takes on, you know, how they respond to this situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think it's interesting because I, I'm just not sure if, I mean, the protests in the 60s for Vietnam, I mean, pretty much was to, you know, to get out, to stop it. Yeah. And I hear those same cries now, but we're not really involved in the war, so um, at, at least we don't have, you know, that sacrifice to make. Mm -hmm. But the um, the aspect of, you know, financing something like that, you know, with an ally mm -hmm. in a situation where you know you're dealing with terrorists. The the issues aren't always <laughs> black and white, cut and dry. Right. You know, and I look at you know our you know our foreign policy team. You know, uh, Anthony Blinken. I have so much respect for that guy. You know, and he came from a background where um, you know he had to you know leave his native country um, you know because of you know. Um, you know, another country coming in and, you know, taking over, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that, that's just tough for me to imagine to live through. Yeah. So, um, I, I, I kind of, you know, my sentiments lie with the fact that, yeah, students, you know, do have the right to protest, uh, but, you know, just be clear about what it is you're protesting, you know. Very true. And, you know, understand that you want to make a point, but sometimes you can make a point by using restraint, you know, and making sure that other people, you know, um, have the right to do w what their right t to do. Um, you know, a little bit of respect goes right. goes a long way. So we'll see. Um, hopefully, you know, now that at least we've made concessions. Uh, in terms of, um, you know, what we're willing to do as far as funding um, that aspect of the war. Mm -hmm. um, do we I have a caller yet? Not, not quite. We're okay. still waiting on, on Gina. But, um, you know, I, I think that um, 
when we talk about, you know, issues like that, you know, it ties into, you know, what you do um, in your declaration of, of human rights because, you know, that aspect of the protests I do agree with. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter what side of the, you know, line you're on, I mean, don't children have a, a right to right. exist? I mean, come on. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, don't hospitals ha have a right to treat people without the threat of, you know, and then even that gets complicated because sometimes they're, they're used as, you know, shields. Yeah. So it's crazy. It's crazy. It really is. And, and, you know, again, when the declaration was created, which was right after World War Two, it was the hope that that, you know, all the countries embrace Absolutely. the Universal Declaration. Absolutely. Uh, 70 different heads of nations got together um, to help create this. Um, and, and even though it's not a binding declaration, it's, it's almost there like just, you know, like an affirmation right. that just needs to, to still be present. Right. And every once in a while, you got to pull out that affirmation and be like, do you remember this? <laughs> Do you remember this? <laughs> well, like, like, right here. Do you remember this? Do you remember this? Like, you know, and, and it's almost like a, it's like a Bible for human rights. Well, I basic, mean, basic human rights. I would see, you, you think about it. <clears throat> We've advanced probably, well, not even probably, obviously. We've advanced more technologically, technologically in 150 years than we have in the previous 15,000 years. Yeah. But why, ha why hasn't the human element oh. <laughs> evolved? Isn't that we, something? Uh, we got a long way to go. Yeah, we do. Hopefully um, AI or robots aren't going <laughs> to. Well, because, you, you know, AI will probably get ticked off, man. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> got to get those humans to act right. <laughs> <laughs> They're not acting right. We're yeah, just gonna humans ain't acting right. Then we'll go into a, a little Terminator um, style yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> confrontation. I will, I will make you humans <laughs> right. You do not compute. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we want to get into a Terminator style um, confrontation. I'm just saying, man, it's crazy. It uh, is crazy. And, and, and you would think that, um, you know, by now... We would understand how to, you know, feed people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, y y you would think by now we would understand how to, you know, house people. So. I mean, just the other day I, I saw in the news so many cities in Connecticut is going through a housing shortage. You know, not enough housing for so many people. But when I fly, Corey's, I see houses everywhere. I know, so do I, but I, I don't, I'm not, sh I, I guess I should probably say not enough affordable housing. Well, if, if well, <laughs> if you want to be cynical now, if we have a homeless problem because of the market value, <laughs> <laughs> but see, some people don't think that, um, housing is a right right the same way they don't see food as a right and food in insecurity is is a real thing um you know the other day i saw karen post that their shelves are bare mm -hmm. they don't have enough stuff for the the amount of people that they have coming to them mm -hmm. and so you know i went down with a bag of clothes and i was like you know what i'm going to swing by price right um and price right I was able to buy, I spent $20 on canned goods mm -hmm. at price right. I probably bought over 24 items for 20 bucks. And that 20 bucks, those items, I took it straight down to, to friendly hands, you know, like, like things like corn, you know, um, SpaghettiOs, you know, just anything so that people can get something to eat. Absolutely. <clears throat> and I, I, I really feel that um, those and, and we see it happening to, you know, a large degree. It's not like we're ignoring it. But you just, you know, you hope that those remote places in the world, you know, would 
you know, get that kind of relief. Mm -hmm. And you, you also don't want a situation where you're creating those situations of food shortages through, you know, economic deprivation or, right. you know, war or, you know, uh, tyranny. Yeah. Um, so oh, crazy prices on groceries. What, that's <laughs> a kind of tyranny, though. Yeah. You know, and you, you think. Um, Do you remember when eggs were five dollars? No. <laughs> I don't know. What? That was a couple months ago. What? Yeah, huh? it was like gold. <laughs> well, I mean, and if you look at the origins behind that, I mean, because we've had inflation before. Mm -hmm. It's not the first time no. that it's happened. So, in fact, inflation was kind of, um, let's just say, fluid throughout, you know, most of the economic cycle in the last century Um and kind of accepted as kind of a way of life, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one at one point. I mean, you know, people talk about, for example, how high you know home interest rates are. But at the time when there was like twenty one percent, you know. So that is that is high. That's high, but that's what it used to be. Woo. Um, so you know, you, you you look at the the big picture over the the, the long term and. Mm -hmm. You know, you try to uh, average things out where, you know, hopefully, um, you know, those market fluctuations works toward the benefit of the consumer. Right, right. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's hard because you have all these things around you going up in prices, you know, housing, like just housing alone, uh, foods going up. But then, you know, for the longest while... Uh, minimum wage stayed the same. Well, see, and that's interesting because I was looking at a study. Um, it was a few months ago, but they said if if uh, the minimum wage kept up with cost of living, co f and they did this from like 1983 to uh, 2000. What, what should it really be? Twenty five dollars an hour. Wow, minimum wage really should be. An hour. If it kept up with the cost of living. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The, uh, the, the price of CEOs compared to workers, yeah, I yeah. mean, it, it, was, it was an obscene number, uh, increase in, in, in wages. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is, you know, because of, you know, the way the, you know, merger and acquisition process was set up. Hmm. But, um, you know, and... and, and I, I think that even led to um, the disparity between, you know, uh, labor and management mm -hmm. that caused, you know, obviously, you know, all of the jobs, especially in the manufacturing sector, to be outsourced. Yeah. So, you know, and for whatever reason it happened, it was really devastating to the economy mm -hmm. and some cities still aren't recovering from mm -hmm. that so you know you have to try to keep a balance on you know these things so that you know you don't get so far outside of the you know the the loop that it's you know irreparable right very you know? true that that scale has to stay kind of mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. so you know when you're talking about you know your human rights um, and how, you know, we can be better purveyors of those rights. Um, you know, it happens in our own daily lives. And I think that that has a, a kinetic effect. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how you build communities, you know. Um, when you empower people, they empower other people. Yeah. If not empowering themselves. Mm. to um, to be what they were purposed to be. True. You know? Um, so I think that holistic thinking is something that we really need to kind of, you know, focus on and get back to uh, in terms of, you know, setting those shared values, that sense mm -hmm. of shared values that, um, that we all kind of um, identify with in terms of, um, you know, how we view our country and, and um, what our uh, moral place is yeah. in, that, in that dynamic. So mm. 
<clears throat> well, Gina is later calling in. Uh, Should I go she, into she, some of these? Um, well, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and give and, a shout out to Why her? don't I do the shout outs? And if you want to try and give Gina a call, maybe she forgot. Oh. <laughs> you know what? You know, she I, might be tending to her husband. So That's might, true, too. Yeah. Do you want to give her a call? Do you have her phone? You know, I actually, I didn't bring my phone, unfortunately. Oh, right. So. Hold on. Let me, um, here. I'll, I'll message her on my phone if you want to. I think we can do that. We're flexible here. <laughs> uh, Want to give a big thank you to our big city sponsors. Um, we couldn't do this without you, and uh, we appreciate your support, of not only the show, but in the community. Want to give a big shout out to Toth Insurance Agency, located at 1151 East Main Street, Torrington, Connecticut. Better protection, better value. 860-496-7771 is their number. And he can be reached online at Toth, I-N-S, at optonline.net. Mel Brickman and Health Markets, located at 16 McDermott Avenue, Suite Number 1 in Torrington, Connecticut. Better call Mel. 860-307-1128 is his number. And he can be reached online at Health Markets dot com backslash local dash health dash i n s brooks todd and mcneil insurance located at 69 water street torrington connecticut keeping an eye on your insurance needs since 1839 that's a long time 860-498-8753 is their number and they can be reached online at brooks todd mcneil dot com Dr. Michael Curry, located at 30 Peck Road, Suite 2105 in Torrington, Connecticut. Pediatric care for over 50 years. 860-482-8177 is his number. And he can be reached online at TorringtonPediatrics.com. Right. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. I and, think Gina's uh, on the call now. Is, is Gina on the call? She is. Let me see. G Gina? Yes. Hi. Hi. So sorry we missed you. I don't know what happened with the okay. last two times you tried calling. <laughs> That's okay. I'm glad I got you now. Yes. Good thing I had my phone on me. <laughs> yes. Good evening, Gina. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, are you keeping it moving? <laughs> yes, I am. I heard That's that. I heard that. Um, thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your schedule to call into the show. Oh, I'm glad to. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I, I'm hearing that uh, you got some, uh, some pretty cool stuff lined up for daily moving storage. So um, I definitely want to, uh, to help you get the word out to our listening audience as to what's going on. Okay. So, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think you got something real cool planned for next month coming up here. It's going to be here before you know it. Yes, June 8th is coming faster than you can imagine. Uh-huh. Uh, and we're, we're going to have a big warehouse sale where we have everything from sofas to dishes to knickknacks to antiques, all kind of, you know, odds and ends. That's awesome. Um, now... If for people that are, that are listening to the show, they, they might be wondering... Um, Where'd you get all that stuff? <laughs> <laughs> well, some of it is from dead lots where people have just abandoned their stuff and they either can't pay for it anymore or just decided they don't want it anymore. Mm -hmm. But I would say the majority of it is from um, our customers that are in the process of moving, whether they're downsizing or going, you know, from Connecticut to, you know, the south, and they don't want the dark furniture anymore. They want white furniture, lighter furniture, smaller furniture, and, you know, they will just say, can you try to take this and, um, you know, and, and sell it? And so um, I have different sections, like sometimes my customers will even show up and they'll stay in their little section with their own personal items, and then, you know, it's a pretty big ordeal. It goes through several different rooms of the warehouse. 
So wow. um, we get we, we get all kind of things um, from very inexpensive to very expensive. We have one um, very valuable antique hutch that's worth like eighteen thousand dollars, which. Um, I don't plan on, you know, that walking out the door anytime soon, but that just gives you an idea of the, the different variety of items that we have. Wow. Wow, no doubt. Now, uh, Gina, um, and, and please don't take this the wrong way, okay? Sure. But uh, most people think that, you know, running a, a, a moving company would be kind of like you know, a man's job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, but uh, you seem to do it uh, with, with the greatest of ease. Um, talk to us a little bit about, you know, what motivates you to, to do the business, you know, why you like the business, and how you've been able to sustain yourself. And how long you've been doing the business. Okay, well, those are right up my alley for questions that I love to answer. Um, but this is a family business. Um, we're go my children are going into the fourth generation wow. um, when, when, you know, they'll be working here. I, I've got three of my children working here now. And um, I've worked for my father. I've been at Bailey's for like 43 years, believe Whoa. it or not. Um, Bailey, yeah, Bailey's will be 100 years old next year. Really? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah. I, I hear a party coming on. <laughs> yeah, we are going to party with that one. <laughs> and so um, I started working with my dad through when I was in high school, and uh, he taught me everything from, you know, I started off being the paper shredder and the, you know, run to the bank and the errand girl, and um, I started taking phone calls, and then I started going on estimates with him and learning how to do it, and he would always be really clear and say, honey, you don't need to learn how to um, load, you know, I need to learn how to load the trucks, but I don't need to physically load the trucks. You know, those are, uh, he never made me feel as though I had to have the strength of a, of a man, you know, to be able to do this job. I just needed to be able to show them and tell them, you know, how to fold pads and how to, moving is an art, you know, it really yeah, is yeah, a talent. Yeah, yeah, it, it is a talent to be able to load things, you know, the way we load them and use every inch, you know, of yeah. a truck um, to load from top to bottom, front to back. Yeah. Um, and so he, so he taught me all those things. He taught me how to use the cubic footage to be able to come up with the weight of somebody's household goods, you know, when you walk through somebody's house and, and say, this is going to take eight hours and it's 9,000 pounds, you know, we can do that very, wow. very quickly. We're where some people just don't have, you know, the, the knowledge or the idea about how you do that. Um, but it comes with experience, and I love it for the biggest reason is that they say moving is there's the three hardest things to go through in life is death, divorce, and moving. And sometimes, sometimes we're dealing we're dealing with people that are going through all three of those things, mm. and so they're very very stressed. It can really change a person's personality when they're going through something like this because you know they they just are so frazzled. And so my job is to really hold their hand throughout the entire process and help them, you know, to see that you you know if you pick the right company. And, you know, even if it's not dailies, as long as it's somebody that, you know, cares and has experience and knows what they're doing, they don't hire subcontractors, don't go with a broker, you never know who you're going to get. You want to go with an independent company that cares after the job is over whether you're going to have a positive review, you know, or a negative one. If you're dealing with a big van line that um, just will never, you know, look at your name or your number again and you basically that's all you are to them is a number that's not, that's not the best way to go but but I give people my cell phone number so before during and after the move I want to hear from them I want to know that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing we're doing what I'm selling what I'm telling people we're going to do and we're bringing a, a quality service for a fair price and that's really what we're all about and I love to be able to help people so when I get somebody on the phone that is crying and you know I'm just so devastated I can't do this another minute and I I'm able to talk them off the ledge. I hang up the phone and say, you know, this is, this, you know, you have to be a counselor too when you're doing this because people really are scared. You know, they've gone through so many, you know, different reasons to get to this point that they want a calming voice on the other end of the phone. And then when we get there, they want to see that we know our stuff. You know, we're putting rug runners down. We're protecting their banisters. We're putting pads on their furniture. That's what they want to see. Mm -hmm. And when all that comes together, then you've, you've given somebody a pretty good move. That's now, what we strive for. Now, see, Gina, you know, 
this is so cool because it puts so many of the pieces of the puzzle together. And, you know, working with you in the brief time that I've been uh, fortunate enough to do so, it all makes sense to me now because I'm thinking to myself, why Gina is so nice. She's <laughs> she's just so nice. And you're so sweet. No, I, but I, I'm being serious. She is. She made and dropped off cookies on at my front porch. I loved it. But oh. but, <laughs> but but I mean, if, well. I mean, it's like you've you know obviously you know we're mentored in the business, which is fantastic. And those, you know, those life lessons you've obviously transitioned uh, from your your bit to your business, and you know, it's and you know the environment, you know, that we work in, you know, in the chamber where you know standards, you know, are a big part of our operating, you know, philosophy, and it just all makes sense to me now. It's like okay. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, I would e expect, you know, nothing less than um, that from, you know, someone who, you know, has, uh, you know, demonstrated uh, that level of, of concern. Um, and not, not only that part of it, Jack, but the other part that is really, you know, when somebody says, why do you do this? Um, around here, I'm, I'm kind of known as the queen of second chances. I mean, when you stop and think about it, there's not too many people these days that are raising their children to be movers. You know, there, there's really a, you're having a, we're having a hard time, you know, finding people that want to do physical labor these days. But we're very picky about who we put on. We'll take less jobs, you know, as, as opposed to taking more jobs and just putting anybody out there on the job. But I get guys that walk through this door that are, are hard workers, and they're basically saying, just give me a chance. You know, I've, um, you know, whatever their circumstances are, um, and they want a second chance. And those are the kind of guys that really, really can work well with me. I'm fair with them, and they're fair with me, and they're very grateful for a second chance. I've got guys that have been with me 20 years, 15 years, 10 years, and it's because there's a give and take there. Mm -hmm. And when you see them on the job, I just had a crew today that came back from a uh, job and said, um, I cannot believe how kind these people were to us today, because it's a really difficult job to do. You know, you're going up and down stairs, you're going through pouring rain and, boy, you know, really hot conditions. You know, it can get to be over 80, 90 degrees in that truck in the middle of summer, you know. So mm -hmm. so these guys are working hard, and that's that's we appreciate that. I've seen my father go through it, my husband go through it, my boys go through it. So I know that this is a difficult job, and I appreciate them. Every time they come to punch out, I say, thank you, guys. Without you on the other side of the counter, we'd be nothing. And I think that's a really big big part in um, if you ask somebody why are you staying at Bailey's instead of going to another moving company I think that's probably why because they know how much we appreciate them and we try to give back so uh, that, that's that's a really big part of Daily's is giver's gain. The more you give, the more you get back. We're known as the preacher's mover. We love to be able to help people that need it. Like uh, we do a lot of work with um, battered women, you know, when they're in a situation where they just have got to get out. You know how many times I've gotten phone calls at 7 o'clock at night and the woman on the other phone is saying, can you please be here at 8 o'clock tomorrow as soon mm -hmm. as my husband leaves? I need to get my little bit of stuff that I have out of this house and go someplace safe. I mean, we're all over that. And, you know, we, we won't charge them. We want to be able to give to them, you know, some peace of mind. And it really does Jack, come back tenfold wow. when you do things like that. You know, so that's that's just kind of, um, you know, that's really a passion for me to be able to help women and men. You know, that you'd be surprised there's been men in our path, too, that have gone down that road that have been abused at home and they just need to get someplace safe. And we also, you know, we're having this sale now because we've got an abundance of furniture, but we're also in situations where people will be moving into new homes like women from Susan B. Anthony and they're going into a new place and they need a, a couch or they need a coffee mm -hmm. table and it. I love to be able to share what we have here with people like that. Now, now Gina, um, you know, when is, it's June 8th, what time? At 8 o'clock in the morning from 8 to 4. Okay. And, a nice um, long day. You know, there's usually a lot. Yep, there's usually a line out the door. So, wow. Um, you know, we'll, we'll open the doors at 8 o'clock and, um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to, 
see a lot of people that we've known, you know, through the years. We've been in this building now up on El Grasso. It's 2.30 El Grasso. We've been in here. We're in our fourth year already, believe it or not. And we never were able to have a big open house or a big, um, you know, reopening, grand opening, because um, what we moved in, you know, right at December 31st, uh-huh. uh, 2019, right before COVID. And then COVID hit, and so all our plans for our open house had to shut down. So we were never able to have that. So this is an opportunity where I can invite people into the building and let them see our offices and our warehouse, give them a tour. I'd love to give people, even if they don't want to come for the sale, you know, just come on up and, and take a look at our place here and, um, you know, see what we've got. We've we've also got an awesome dog park that we've made. We have 13 acres of land here. So wow. we've got a dog park um, around the outside um, that is so fun. It's a great trail. Um, and and we have pickleball courts inside. <laughs> I know you invited me to play pickleball. I've got to make it one of these Thursdays, right? Uh, Tuesdays or Thursdays. Yep. I was just talking to a couple ladies that said we need another person for Thursdays. So I thought about you right away. But it's definitely um, you know we're making a lot of good use out of the space. That's for sure. Um, this is so exciting, Gina, and I'm so glad that we had an opportunity to uh, get the word out to our listening audience, uh, to our viewing audience uh, as well, uh, <clears throat> about um, not only the event that you have coming up, coming up, but about you. Yeah. You know, I mean, oh, thank you. I, th- that's obviously, um, you, you, uh, your faith has a lot to do with, with, with uh, your, your uh, world perspective. Um, and it, it definitely sure shows and, um, just want to encourage you to keep your light shining, my friend. Yep, God has been good to us. That's that's one thing. I've got a sign being made that's going to go in the vestibule, and it says, I have seen the work of God, because this is definitely um, a miracle story. Someday when you have time, I'd love to tell you how this all came about and how we ended up in this spectacular building. And, um, you know, like I say, to God be the glory, and that's really what it boils down to. So. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to, you know, tell you and your listeners a little bit about this. And um, I, I love, I love being able to talk about dailies and being able to do whatever we can to give back to the community. Well, we're going to be definitely doing more of that, Gina. And um, just to let you know that uh, we appreciate you. And um, you know, this is uh, <clears throat> something that uh, I think you just never can tell because. Uh, when, when, when he has a plan, sometimes you just got to put one foot in front of the other and see where he leads you. Yeah, that's right. This was a leap of faith. And, um, I, I just am so thankful that it's going the way that it is. And, um, I, I just really appreciate it. I appreciate what you guys do. You know, everything that you're doing to help so many people as well. It takes a village, you know, so thank you for what you do as well. <clears throat> well, we appreciate you, my friend. And, uh, We'll be talking right, again we'll soon. Talk soon. Bye, Gina. All right. So thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Gina Bunch of Daily Moving Storage. Daily Moving and Keep storage. it moving. Yeah, yeah. When, Keep it grooving. When my mama um, sold her place, um, you know, I was already living where I'm living now, and, and uh, Gina's my neighbor, like I said, and I said, Mom, I've got the moving company for you. <laughs> <laughs> and Gina, without hesitation, I called Gina on her phone, and, and like that, you know, everything got done yep uh, you know unbelievable and and in this day and age the way the housing market is like yep. when houses sell so quickly yep. sometimes they're like all right you have five days to move out and you're like oh my god what yeah how am i getting all this stuff out in five days call gina a true <laughs> call pro gina. a true yeah. pro uh <clears throat> i think we got a segment coming up here uh pascal Nijam, our field correspondent out there um, making it happen for people that are looking to purchase a home. Or downsize. Or downsize. Let's see what she's got to tell us today. If you've been holding off on selling your house to make a move because you felt mortgage rates were too high, the recent downward trend is exciting news for you. 
Mortgage rates have come down since last October when they hit 7.79%. In fact, they've been below 7% for over a month now. And while they're not going back to the 3% we saw during the past few years, they are expected to continue to go down from where they are now in the near future. As Dean Baker, senior economist at the Center for Economic Research explains, it also appears that mortgage rates are now falling again. They will almost certainly not fall to pandemic lows, although we may soon see rates under 6%, which would be low by pre-Great Recession standards. Here are two reasons why this recent trend and the expectation it'll continue is such good news for you. One, you may not feel as locked into your current mortgage rate. With mortgage rates already significantly lower than they were just a few months ago, you may feel less locked into the current mortgage rate that you have on your house. When mortgage rates were higher, moving to a new home meant possibly trading in a low rate for one that was as high as 8%. However, with rates dropping, the difference between your current mortgage rate and the new rate you would be taking on isn't as big as it was. That makes moving more affordable than it was just a few months ago. As Lance Lambert, founder of Resi Club explains, we might be at peak lock-in effect. Some move up or lifestyle sellers might be coming to terms with the fact 3% and 4% mortgage rates aren't returning anytime soon. Two, more buyers will be coming to the market. According to data from Bright MLS, the top reason buyers have been waiting to take the plunge into home ownership is high mortgage rates. Lower mortgage rates mean buyers can potentially save money on their home loans, making the prospect of purchasing a home more attractive and affordable. Now that rates are easing, more buyers are likely to feel that they're ready to jump back into the market and make their move. And more buyers means more demand for your house. Bottom line is, if you've been waiting to sell because you didn't want to take on a larger mortgage rate or you thought buyers weren't out there, the recent decline in mortgage rates may be your sign that it's time to move. And that's our good friend and colleague, Pascal Nee Jane, dropping the deets, man. Uh, she's going to tickle me, uh, tickle me pink. Come on, Carice, tickle me pink, girl. I like that. I tried to sneak up on him. But yeah, Pascal, Pascal is amazing. I just yes, love yes. listening to her segments yes. and her words of wisdom when it comes to the housing market. She's, Absolutely. she's great to listen to. Yep. But, um, you know, getting back to these headpieces yep. and how you create them. So the program that I have developed, like I said, um, each person gets to create their own headpiece. Right. Look at, look at the difference in the headpieces, okay? So you can create something like this. You can create something like that for the men. You can put, add more jewels. You can make the beads hanging. Um, so it's a great team building activity to do. Right. And then we also have a large headpiece that we can then have everyone come together and create together mm -hmm. okay so it shows individuality yet yet uniformity mm -hmm. okay so it shows how everyone can add their own touch mm -hmm. they can be an individual but yet still be cohesive mm -hmm. and and be a group and and doing this as a group is a great team building activity so <laughs> what take a look again so if anyone would love to schedule this this presentation and program um i would love for anyone to contact me my number is on here it's 860 it's 325-0791 Woo, let me zoom in there okay um contact me i'd love to to send you um information on the program again june is is caribbean heritage month and I tie the program in with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So I do a, a presentation speech on the Universal Declaration. And then we go into the, the actual activity portion, um, coupled with a Caribbean carnival dance. You know what, yeah. you know what, Chris? You're, you're just brilliant. You're just brilliant. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what, what suit I'm going to wear with this. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Hey, That's Dan, you got any suggestions for me, man? Tan suit. Like tan, <laughs> tan suit. You know what they say about tan suits, bro, man. What you trying to do to me? What do they say about tan suits? You, well, never mind. We won't. We won't. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll 
get back to that later. Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, some uh, cool stuff going on downtown. You know, uh, some things are happening. Um, A lot of things are happening. Uh, the month of, between the end of May and June, there's so many events going on. We've got the golf tournament on the 20th of May. We've got, um, you said this is on the 18th, yeah. which is at Five Points Art Gallery. We have Gina Bunch has her, um, her, her antique and moving sale on the 8th of June. 8th of June is also yep. the same day as the the beer tasting event. Beer Fest, I believe it's yep, called, yep. up at Ski Sundown. Yep. Um, that's benefiting, um, what is Brooklyn Memorial. Brooklyn Memorial and also St. Marin's Church. Yep. I mean, there are just so many great events coming up that, um, you know, you don't even have to go far for. You don't. Um, and one of those uh, businesses downtown trying to uh, make it happen is Salt 2.0. Salt 2.0. You know? Um, so uh, let's take a look at Salt 2.0, see what they got to offer. All right. I'm Pascal Nijame. And I'm Joe Severo, and today we'd like you to join us at Salt 2.0 in downtown Torrington. Conveniently located right next to the Warner Theater, Salt 2.0 is a great option on show nights. But honestly, Salt's an accessible and desirable option every day of the week. The restaurant's open from 11.30 to 8 o'clock Monday through Thursday and 11.30 to 9 o'clock on Fridays and Saturdays. The food service is quick and the options are both affordable and healthy. They fix grain bowls, wraps, burritos, salads, and my vegan friends tell me that the vegan burrito is to die for. Not to mention they have a finely curated lineup of international and regional draft beers and Bud Light too. <laughs> There's also a great wine selection and a full cocktail bar. The best part might be the seating. I love watching sidewalk traffic from the front section. The venue is both spacious and inviting. There's a ping pong table in the upper wing and tap TV interactive trivia at the bar. When you come to Salt, you choose the experience. Salt 2.0 was born out of necessity during the pandemic. The original Salt 2.0 was open in Litchfield. A dining room of the Saltwater Grill was cleverly converted into an offshoot to provide food for pickup. You can order online for pickup or you can order online to sit in, or you can request that a wait person take your order the old-fashioned way. For City Views, I'm Pascal Nee James. And I'm Joe Severo. Connecting you with Salt 2.0. And that was Pascal again. Uh, yeah, Pascal, she, she's putting in the work. Yes, she, she is. She said, I want to be on City Views. <laughs> All right, we can hook you up. We can hook a sister up. Yes, we can. Speaking of hookups, we got our big city sponsors again. Toth Insurance Agency, 1151 East Main Street. Better protection, better value. 860-496-7771. And they can be reached at tothins at optonline.net. If, if I'm not mistaken, Steve is celebrating his 18th anniversary. Yes, he celebrated it on Mother's Day. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, congratulations, Steve, on 18 successful years in the of, business. Uh, in, the, in, in the business. In the business. Yeah. Yes, he, he is my, my agent. Well, he, he does. Oh, he, yeah. He does For my work. umbrella policy, great, great job. Does good work. Next, we have Mel Brickman and Health Markets, 16 McDermott Ave, Suite 1. Better, Better call, call Mel. Mel. 860-307-1128. Healthmarkets.com slash local dash health dash INS. Brooks, Todd and McNeil Insurance, 69 Water Street, keeping an eye on your insurance needs since 1839. 860-598-8753, brookstoddmcneil.com. Dr. Michael Curry, 30 Peck Road, Suite 2105, pediatric care for over 50 years. 860-482-8177, TorringtonPediatrics.com. And now we have our T-Town shout-outs. T-Town shout-outs! T-Town! So it's sponsored by the Torrington Downtown Partners, growing downtown Torrington one business at a time. Dawn's Getaway, 24 Winston Road. Christie's Restaurant, 545 Winston Road. Health Insurance Services, 438 Main Street. Wall Wall and Fraunhofer, 117 Main Street. 
Soul Latina Cafe, 31 Hungerford Street. Very great food. Jimmy's Store, 1238 East Main Street, Torrington. Also oh, delicious great food. food. Five Points Art Center, 855 University Drive. And George's Music, 905 New Harrington Road. Thank you for your support. Absolutely. And want to remind you once again, the Arts Talk at Five Points Art Center. The Five Points Art Center presents Leroy Chessick, a Vietnam combat war photographer. And join Leroy as he shares his experiences from the Vietnam War. The presentation takes place Saturday, May 18th. That's this Saturday at 2 p.m. Five Points Art Center located at 855 University Drive. The event is free and open to the public. For more information, go to fivepoints.org. You heard? Spread the word. <laughs> uh, Corey's, thank you so much for tonight. I know how tough it's been on you lately, but like the trooper that you are, you just waged the battle and came through like a champ. I thank you. I enjoy being on City Views as your co-host. Well, I couldn't imagine having any better co-host than you, <laughs> my dear. And uh, as always, we want to thank Doug, and, and we want to thank Dan, and we want to thank our field segment people, Shane, Pascal, Joe, Hello. Kareem. I uh, want to thank the uh, Culture for a Cause team, Tracy, Nicole. Uh, we, uh, we appreciate you. And uh, look forward to more good stuff coming at you right here. From City Views. City Views. City Views. City Views. City Views. <laughs>